Hi, and welcome to our video guide on how to migrate your Access database to the cloud without coding. In part two, I will show you how to import your data, database tables, and table relationships into Caspio. Let's have a look. This Access application has a total of five tables, and the three tables that we're going to import into Caspio are the users table, bugs table, and also the comments table. The reason why we're not going to import all five tables is because the filters table and the settings table are unique to the offline application, so we're not going to have a need for those two tables inside our web application. Also what I did is I populated my tables with some fictitious data because I want to show you how we can bring the data into Caspio as well. And last but not least, I'm going to show you how we can import the relationships between the tables as well. Now remember what I said in the first video. You cannot import your entire database, so the forms and the reports will need to be recreated inside Caspio. So instead of trying to import the entire file that contains the forms and reports, Access allows you to split your database into two files, one that contains your forms and reports, and the second file that contains just your tables, your data, and your relationships. And to do that, you're going to go to Database Tools, and you're going to click on this button, Access Database, and then right away you'll see that it allows you to split your database into two different files. So when you click on that, you're going to click Split Database, and let's save our tables to our desktop, and we're going to call this Bug Tracking DB. When you're done, click on Split. You'll see this message that it's telling you that you have to close your bugs table now, so let's go ahead and do that. And let's go ahead and close all the tables, including the users table. And then you'll get this confirmation message to let you know that you have successfully split your database. Hit OK. And that's all you have to do. So just remember, before you split your database to close out your tables, and if you haven't closed them, Access is going to give you that prompt, and it's going to close those for you automatically. So now let's learn how to bring that Access database into Caspio. The first thing you're going to want to do is click on this link, New App. And to begin building your application, you have two options here. You can either import data, or you can begin building your application from scratch. So if you don't have those tables and data created inside Access, you can build those tables directly from within Caspio. But because I already have my Access database, I'm going to begin this way. I'm going to give my application a name. You'll have your own naming convention. It just depends on the type of application that you're developing. But I'm going to call mine Bug Tracking Database. I'm going to locate that file on my desktop. I'm going to select it, click on Open, and then move on to the next screen. Now take a look and see what's happening in the background. Caspio is actually creating the application container, and it's in the midst of uploading that data file. So now let's go to the next screen. And this screen is actually going to show you the list of all of your tables. As I mentioned before, we don't have a need for the filters table and the settings table. So on this screen is where you can actually disable both of those tables. Using the action column, you can specify how you want to bring the tables and the data into Caspio. I'm bringing these tables for the very first time, so I'm going to select this action called Create New. However, you do have other options here. You can replace an existing table. You can append new data. You can update just specific records from within your database. So I do recommend that you play around with each one of these actions at some point so that you can see the behavior that you get as you bring data into Caspio. Here you can change the destination object, so you can rename the table to something else. We're going to keep that as is and continue. Now on this screen, before you finally import your file, you can actually toggle back and forth between your tables to see the sample data. And here you also have access to change the field name to something else. You can include or exclude a specific field that you're importing. And you can also change the data type of each one of your fields. So as you go through each one of your tables, just verify to make sure that all of your data types are set up correctly. For example, in my comments table, I want to make sure that my new ID that's populated inside this table is an auto number. So each comment that gets added to this table, I would like to automatically populate a new ID for each comment. For my users table, I'd like to do the same thing. So every time I add a new user to this table, I want to make sure I flag it as a unique ID. And also for our bugs table, 
we want to make sure that the ID for each bug is also flagged as an auto number. These tables also have foreign keys, so for example, assign to and also open by, those need to be integers. Why? Because if I look at my users table, you will see that every user in my table will have a unique ID. And if we wish to stamp that unique ID in a related table, it needs to be stamped as an integer. The reason why is because an auto number is a whole number. It's never going to have a decimal. It's always going to have an increment of one. So one, two, three, so on and so forth. And if you're going to stamp that whole number in a related table, you're going to want to stamp that as an integer. So don't worry too much if you missed a step on this screen. Even after you import the file, you can always make these changes. So let's go ahead and import the database file now. Once the import is completed, you can hit the close button. And now to find your imported tables, all you need to do is go to this object called tables. Here you will find all three of those tables. In fact, you can actually click on open to view the data. If you'd like to make modifications to your field, you can go to table design. And here you can rename a field to something else. You can delete a field and you can also introduce a new field to your table along with changing the data type of each one of your fields. Now to view the relationships between the tables, go back out to the tables menu, click on relationships. Include all three of your tables inside the canvas screen. And now just like in Access, you can rearrange these tables however you want to display them. So for example, we can have the users table maybe in the middle. I can put my comments table here. And I can have my bugs table here at the bottom. Let me just rearrange that a little bit more so that you can see a better visual. And now we have the same thing as in Access database. So you can see how Caspia was able to import the data the tables, and the relationships. Now let me show you how quickly we can create additional tables for this application. And all I'm going to do is create three lookup tables so that we can use them as dropdowns in our application. So back out to the tables menu, click new table, and always get into a habit of creating a unique ID. Every single table that you build should have a primary key to identify all the records in the database. So this first table is going to be the lookup table of priorities. So I'm going to call this priority ID. Just use a very simple auto number. And then priorities. We're going to save this table now. And let's call this priorities lookup. Hit finish. And just like that, I was able to build an additional table. Now our application has four tables. But I'm going to open up this lookup table now and very quickly input my values. So the first one can be urgent, maybe critical, minor. So we'll just have three options. Back out to the tables menu and let's set up our second lookup table. And this time let's add all the statuses. So we'll have status ID. Also flag that as an auto number and the status itself. So let me save the table. Let's open the table just like before. And what kind of status can we use inside this application? Well, a bug can be new, in progress, and closed. Now you might have additional ones. It's completely up to you. And for the last table, let's have a lookup table of categories. So hopefully you're seeing how easy it is to build tables in Caspio. It really just depends uh, what kind of information you're collecting in a database. If you're building a CRM, let's say, you might want to have revenue type fields that you're collecting in the application. So in this table, we're going to have category ID. and the category itself. So name and save your table. And let's add some categories. And I'm only going to list a few. Let's have reporting, for example, application, performance, forms, and maybe workflow. Once you're done, go back out to the tables menu, 
Now I could have also created these tables in Access too and imported the tables, but I wanted to show you how in Caspia we can also build tables very quickly. So whatever preference you have, you can either build all your tables in Access or Excel and then import the files into Caspia, or you can just build your tables directly inside Caspia. One more minor modification that I need to do in order to create the login interface. I'm going to go to design mode for the users table. And now I have a choice. I can either allow my users to log into the application using some kind of a unique username, or we can turn the email field into a unique field, and they can either log in using a username credential or an email field. This part is completely up to you. Whatever preference you have, you can give them access to log in with any set of credentials that you want. In my example, I'm going to use the username but I do need to flag that field as a unique field because no two usernames are ever going to be the same. And I also need to add a password field. I'm going to change the data type to password. So this field is encrypted. I'm going to move the field to the very top so it's easier to edit. Let's move it underneath the email field. I'm going to save my table. And then inside a data sheet tab, for John Doe, I'm just going to simply edit that password and I'm going to call this test so it's easier to remember. So just remember that we changed John's password to test so later on when we build the application and we try to log in using the login screen, I'm going to use this combination of John Doe as the username and also password test to log into the application. So in part two of the video guide, we learn how to import the Access database into Caspio. We also learn how to build new tables inside Caspio and how to manipulate some of the data elements to maintain the application integrity. Join me in part three, where I'm going to teach you how to build a login interface. And then in part four, we're going to learn how to build the forms and reports. And in the final video, we're going to learn how to deploy the entire application to a website. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.